if you pass your exam and you feel like it's a bit of a fluke, because basically you've done your revision a bit half assed I mean, you know that if you failed the exam, your mum would have kittens. If you've had a hard day and feeling zonked, you might just want to veg out and watch some Netflix. Hi, and welcome back to Love English. I'm in my kitchen, which means it's probably going to be a bit of a meaty lesson. Yes, in today's lesson, we are looking at advanced slang words. Now, I say advanced because I think they are less commonly taught at school and even on YouTube. And I'll be going from A to Z. Yes, I have covered every letter in the alphabet, choosing what I think are more advanced, less commonly taught, but certainly very commonly used advanced slang words and phrases. And there's even a few idioms in there for you. I really think this lesson is going to help you boost your colloquial, meaning spoken English, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Now, as always, don't forget to click that subscribe button so that you are notified when we upload new lessons. Don't forget to follow us on our social media, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. And if you're interested in coming to the UK this year, if you'd like to study in a lovely British town with a fantastic, reputable language school, then do go to www.elcuk.co.uk where we can help you find the best course for you and offer you support in finding accommodation and with your visas. So really, if you're keen to learn more slang, click the link below. Right, let's get started before you guys start zoning out. Not that you will, this is going to be a rather interesting lesson. Number one, to be airy fairy, airy fairy, to not be practical or based in reality. She wants to buy an old castle in Ireland. She's been a bit airy fairy about it all. How does she think she's going to afford it? Ass over tit, specifically to fall ass over tit. Now, this is rather vulgar, but again, one that is commonly used. Your ass is a vulgar term for your bottom, your bum. And tit is a vulgar word for breasts. So when you fall ass over tit, you basically are falling in an uncontrollable way. I fell off my bike and went ass over tit. It was so embarrassing. If someone is quite artistic, then you might refer to them as being a bit arty farty. Now, hopefully most of you know what the word fart means. And yes, this does sound a little bit offensive. If you describe someone as being a bit arty farty, oh, you know, James and his friends, they're all a bit arty farty. You're suggesting that they are very much interested in art and all of these kind of things, but perhaps not very practical or based in reality. Perhaps trying a little bit too hard to convince people of your artistic talents. Now, we've got lots of words for crazy in English and balmy is perhaps one of my favourite. It's not too offensive. So you could say, oh, the old lady around the corner, she's a bit balmy, isn't she? You wouldn't necessarily want to say it to someone's face, but it certainly isn't too rude or too strong. So, balmy. So who do you know that's a little bit balmy? Certainly, I'm sure quite a few of us have had a few balmy teachers in our time. There's probably a few students that would refer to me as balmy. From balmy to barney. Barney. To have a barney is basically to have an argument with somebody. Usually a loud argument. There was a couple in the supermarket having a massive barney over which cheese to buy. I couldn't believe it. Number six. Quite simply, bicky. Bicky. Do you fancy a bicky with your cuppa? So, bicky, biscuit, cuppa, cuppa tea. You should know that one by now. I gave my students a real bollocking for not doing their homework on time. Very informal, quite rude. Be careful when and where you use this and, of course, with whom. But to give someone a bollocking, or you might even use rollicking to soften it so it doesn't sound so rude, is to tell someone off, to reprimand them. So I gave my students a bollocking for not doing their homework on time. I wouldn't actually say that to my students. I think... Um, it sounds a bit rude, particularly coming from an English teacher. I wouldn't want to sound unprofessional. But certainly it's one that I've heard used very frequently. Oh, two days until payday. I can't wait. I am brassic at the moment. Brassic, meaning very poor. I have no money at all. 
So it's a great word for saying you're really, really poor without money. We've also got skint, which is similar, but I think brassic is quite a nice one and one that you might not have learnt yet. So who do you borrow money from when you're brassic? Number nine, one again that is commonly used but can sound a little bit rude depending on who you use it with, buggered, buggered. Now, there is a rather vulgar meaning of this, but in the normal sense of the way that we use the word on a day-to-day -day basis, meaning tired, it's actually not that rude. So if you say, oh, I've had such a hard day, I am buggered, I need to go and veg out on the sofa, wait for that one, it's coming at the end, then you're saying you are really, really tired and buggered. A little bit like knackered, but of course knackered is one that you already know. Now, you also know buggered. Number 10, if you can't be doing or if you can't be asked, obviously can't be doing is a little bit more polite, then you really have no motivation to do something. You don't want to do it. Oh, I can't be asked with cooking tonight. Do you fancy getting a takeaway? Number 11, a chav or the adjective chavy. Be very careful who you refer to as being a chav or chavy because essentially you're saying they're a particularly common person. It suggests that they have a lack of education and are from a low social class. So it is very rude. Don't use it with just anyone. You might want to say something like, oh, those kids hanging around the corner shop, they look a bit chavvy. Have you seen what they're wearing? So it does suggest a particular way of dressing and behaving. So perhaps wearing lots of brand names or even fake brand names might make someone a little bit chavvy. Kushti, kushti. You guys have got a bit of a cushy deal getting free English lessons on YouTube. Good or enjoyable? Cushy. Right, let's crack on. Number 13, to crack on, to continue, to get started again. So it suggests that you were in the middle of something, perhaps there was a pause, a break, and you want to continue. Let's crack on and finish putting together this IKEA bed. I don't want to be here all evening. We really need to crack on so we finish the meeting before six. I don't want to go home too late. A dab hand. If someone is a dab hand at something, it suggests that they are particularly skilled or good at that thing. I would suggest that my husband is a dab hand in the kitchen. Now, this doesn't mean that he's good at washing up. It suggests he's actually good at cooking, which is definitely true because he's Italian. Most Italians are a dab hand in the kitchen, in fact. Oh. I've got a bit of a dicky tummy today. I think I ate some cheese that had gone off. Now, there's quite a lot of vocab in that sentence. Gone off is a phrasal verb to suggest something has gone past its sell-by date. So it's older than it should be to eat. And if you say something, particularly a body part, is dicky, then you're saying that it's not working very well. So you can have a dicky heart, a dicky tummy. Tummy is a nice informal word for stomach. Uh, oh, what else could you have? A few dicky things. Um, dicky heart and dicky tummy are quite common. So if something is dicky, it suggests it's not working very well. There's something wrong with it. Right. We often say that someone is bright if we're suggesting they're clever. But did you know that dim, the opposite of bright, bright being a lot of light, dim being very little light, is actually exactly the same. Bright, a lot of light, very clever. Dim, not a lot of light. And a bit stupid. He's nice but dim. It's not too insulting but again you wouldn't say that to somebody's face. You might say lovely girl in my class, really good heart but just a little bit dim. You're suggesting they're not very intelligent, maybe not very quick to learn certain things. But again don't say it to someone's face, it's quite insulting. Right, a dog's dinner. Surprisingly there are two informal slang idiomatic expressions that come from this. If you make a dog's dinner of something, you basically make a big mistake. It all goes wrong. She made a dog's dinner of the party plans. She forgot to send out the invitations. If someone is dressed up like a dog's dinner, you're suggesting they are dressed up in a rather ostentatious, over-the-top way. They're perhaps wearing too much makeup, they've not dressed particularly well, and they're trying to make too much of an effort. So that's quite a good one. There's two for one in that. A dog's dinner, to make a mess of something when things don't go to plan, and to dress up like a dog's dinner, to be dressed in a way that is perhaps too much, that doesn't look very good at all.
Number 18, effing, effing. Now, essentially, this is in replacement of, yeah, that's right, the F word. We say effing. Oh, what is she effing doing? It still doesn't sound great, but we're avoiding using the actual F word because it is quite vulgar and rude. And to be honest, it's not one that I actually use. When I swear, I tend to use softer swear words. I just don't think it sounds very nice. So effing, to be honest, I still don't like it. Um, but you guys might like to use that as a replacement of the F word, effing. 19, a fluke. If something is a fluke, it was a bit of a fluke, then it's something that happened by chance or luck. A good thing, usually. I passed the exam, but I really think it was a complete fluke. I didn't even revise for it. 20. The Full Monty. The Full Monty. Now, you may have heard of the film The Full Monty. This does not involve taking any of your clothes off. In fact, when we say The Full Monty, it was The Full Monty, we're suggesting that there is everything you require. I had an amazing English breakfast. It was the full Monty. Sausages, eggs, bacon, black pudding, everything. Yum. Come on, get a wiggle on. Right, get a wiggle on. To wiggle is, <laughs> I'm just trying to look at myself do that in the camera. If you wiggle, you might think about moving your bottom a little bit. And essentially what it's saying is hurry up. A nice way to say hurry up. Come on, get a wiggle on. We're gonna be late. The bus leaves in 10 minutes. If you give someone stick, you give them a hard time. You perhaps annoy them and irritate them about something. For example, I noticed Sarah looking at Sam last night. I really think she fancies him, so I gave her a bit of stick, meaning I kind of annoyed her and mocked, joked with her about it. So if you give someone stick, you're giving them a difficult time for something. It's usually done in a nice, humorous way. It could also be someone telling you off. For example, my mother gave me stick for not revising for the exam. Even though I passed, she still gave me stick. It's that word again, tits. Yes, if something goes tits up, it goes very, very wrong, okay? It is quite vulgar, so I don't recommend using it too often. My travel plans went tits up when the flights were cancelled. I can't believe it. 24. I think you guys might know this one, but I just love it. I think it is such an important slang word to know. Gutted. I was gutted when my holiday was cancelled, meaning disappointed. What makes you feel gutted? Is there something that's happened recently? 25. If somebody does something half asked, half asked, it means they do something in a way that they don't make much effort and make a bit of a mess of it. They've done it in a careless way. I asked her to do the washing up and she really did a half assed job because there was food all over the plates when I went to check them. My mum had kittens when I told her I've got a boyfriend with a motorbike. To become worried, upset or angry over something. You're not literally having kittens, but it suggests you're very, very upset about something. To have kittens. It's a lovely idiomatic expression. Try using it in the comments section below. It's a little bit more challenging, but definitely worth a go. Hunky-dory. It's all hunky-dory. No problem. To be satisfactory or pleasant. Basically okay. Everything's fine. Honestly, one minute they're having a Barney and the next minute everything's hunky-dory. I just do not understand that couple. In the buff. If you're in the buff, then you're essentially naked. <laughs> okay? You can be in your birthday suit. That's a lovely expression too. And it also means naked. But if you're in the buff, you are without clues. I'm sorry, I couldn't answer the door. I was in the buff. I just got out of the shower. Jim jams. Jim jams. A lovely informal way of saying pyjamas. It's really nice to use maybe with children. So you might say, come on, kids. Get your gym jams on, it's time for bed. Uh, but yeah, it's that simple. It's pyjamas, PJs, gym jams. Kerfuffle, kerfuffle. There was a kerfuffle outside the pub last night. I think someone had gotten a bit drunk. Yes, a kerfuffle means some kind of a commotion. Noise, excitement or argument. It could be a positive thing. There was a bit of a kerfuffle over, I don't know, uh, a new book coming out or... <sighs> I'm trying to think of an example. Uh, there was a bit of a kerfuffle in class when the students realised the they hadn't done their homework. Um, so yeah, excitement, commotion, it could be an argument as well. Knees up. 
knees up. I think this is a little bit more old fashioned, but I think you could still hear it being used, particularly maybe in London. But essentially a knees up is a party where there's lots of dancing, an energetic, noisy party. They had a right old knees up last night and they had a great time. Larry, Larry, a lovely adjective to describe somebody who's a little bit loud, usually because they've been drinking too much. She always gets Larry after she's had a couple of glasses of wine. She does my head in. That's an extra expression meaning to be annoyed. If someone does your head in, they irritate you. Lush, lush. I think you'll hear Jamie Oliver use this expression quite frequently. Oh, wow, that dessert was lush. So very attractive to look at, taste, smell even. Lush. You can also use it to describe someone maybe you're a bit attracted to. Oh God, he is so lush. I would suggest this is maybe one that's used perhaps with younger people. I wouldn't use this word in that way. I would probably only use it when I'm describing food that I think is particularly tasty. Minted. Minted. She is minted. Have you seen how many Louis Vuitton handbags she has? Very rich. Wealthy. Muppet. Muppet. Basically, a nice word to say that someone is being a bit foolish or stupid. Oh, don't be a muppet. Of course, I'll give you a lift in the car. It's raining outside. Numpty. Numpty. Very similar to muppet. Again, these are ones that you could even use with children. They're not too offensive. Don't be a numpty. Of course, you're invited to the party. O-T-T. -T. If something is O-T-T, -T, you're saying that it's over the top. She went a bit O-T-T -T with all the party decorations. Did you see how many balloons there were? To do too much, to go, to do more than you need to do. Pack it in, pack it in. A great expression that you can use with children when you're telling them off and telling them to stop doing something. Oh, will you pack it in? You are being so noisy. 39. Peckish, peckish. If someone asks whether you're hungry, you might want to say, oh, well, yeah, I'm a bit peckish. It's a nice soft way to say, yes, you are hungry, particularly if someone's asking you to invite you to eat with them even. So I'm a little bit hungry. I'm peckish. 40. Oh, my God, she is pissing me off. You would not believe how many times she's called today. To piss someone off is to annoy them, to extremely annoy them. Um, it is vulgar, it is a little bit rude, it is more or less swearing, so use it carefully. Who's pissed you off lately? Quid. Quid. This is really essential because you are likely to find that someone asks to borrow five quid, or have you got a quid on you? Essentially, informal for one pound, okay? A quid is one pound, five quid, five pounds. Be careful because we don't say quids, okay? Five quid but not quids. Ratty. She is always ratty in the morning. She's just not a morning person at all. To be in a bad mood, short-tempered, grumpy, ratty. 44, rather old-fashioned. You might hear it used. Rumpy pumpy. Rumpy pumpy is a way of talking about sex, but a way to avoid saying sex because it might be a bit taboo. You might not want to use that word to be too offensive. So rumpy pumpy, rather a humorous way of saying sex. And again, more likely that you'll hear it in films or TV programmes. It's a little bit dated now, I think. All right, don't be sarky. I know I'm usually late. Sarky. Informal for sarcastic. Sarcastic. Sarky. She scarpered when it was her turn to do the washing up. To scarper, to run away, usually from something, to run away quickly. All the kids scarpered when she came out the house after she heard them throw in a ball at the door. All right, don't get shirty. Shirty. Bizarre, but essentially it means grumpy, bad-tempered. She was shirty with me when I told her I couldn't make the party. Similarly, but one that we often use when we're referring to teenagers, to strop. To strop. To be stroppy. Usually to be in a bad mood because you're not getting your own way. So teenagers are often very stroppy when they're not allowed to do certain things. She was in a right strop when her mum said she couldn't go to the cinema that night because she hadn't done her homework. Tight ass, Tight ass, Essentially, someone that is not very generous, that's very careful with their money and doesn't like to spend it. To be a tight ass. How many of you know a tight ass? 
Sarah at work is such a tight ass, she didn't even want to chip in and give money towards the boss's leaving present. To chip in is to put money towards something, like in a pot, when you all add money together to collect for a present. 49. Don't say it's raining cats and dogs. You can say it's tipping it down. It's tipping it down. Essentially, we're saying that it is really, really raining heavily. So it often tips down in the UK, even in the summer. Sorry, guys. 50. If someone's a twit, it is more offensive to use than numpty or muppet. So be careful. You're saying that someone's being stupid, foolish, but it is slightly ruder and stronger. Her boyfriend is such a twit. Did you hear how he was talking to her? To be up for something. To be up for something. If you are up for something, then it means that you would like to do it. Yeah, you think it's a great idea. I'm definitely up for going to the cinema tonight. What else is there to do? 52, to veg out. A great expression referring to, well, I guess vegetables. Um, to veg out is to relax, to do nothing. I just want to veg out and watch Netflix tonight. I've had such a hard week. 53, it's a little bit dated, but it's a lovely way of saying, oops, I made a mistake. Whoops-a-daisy. Whoops-a-daisy. Um, I use it. I would probably use it more with children. Whoops-a-daisy, you fell over, don't worry, just dust it off, you'll be fine. So I'd use it in that way. But yeah, certainly it's probably a little bit more dated. Um, you might hear it. Whoops-a-daisy, you've made a mistake of some sort. Usually like a, a physical mistake, like you've fallen over or you've broken something. Whoops a daisy. Right. 54. A lovely phrasal verb to wind someone up, or you can refer to someone as a wind up merchant. Okay. So we've got the verb, phrasal verb, and then we've got the noun. Now, essentially, to wind someone up is to irritate them, to annoy them, usually on purpose. So if you describe someone as a wind up merchant, then you're saying a person who does this quite often to purposely irritate somebody. Oh, God, Ben at work is such a wind-up merchant. He irritates everyone. Wobbly. Wobbly. Now, wobbly usually means kind of not firm, a bit wobbly, a bit like my belly at the moment after having a child. Um, but if you throw a wobbly or have a wobbly, you lose your temper. OK, my dad threw a wobbly when I got back after midnight. He was really angry. So to lose your temper, wobbly, throw a wobbly have a wobbly. Yob. Oh my goodness, have you seen all the yobs down the end of the road? Yob is referring to usually a young man, so perhaps teenager, early teens, who behaves in a rather rude, offensive way, perhaps even in a violent way. There were a load of yobs hanging around the supermarket last night. I don't fancy going there again. Yonks. Yonks. I haven't seen you in yonks. I haven't seen you for a very long time. It's a great expression, one that I have also used in my posh vocabulary video. So try using it, yonks. 58. Zonked. Less commonly used, but definitely one that a native speaker would understand. If you say, I am zonked, you're saying you are very, very tired. I went to the gym this evening and I am zonked. It is definitely time to veg out and do nothing. And finally, to zone out. To zone out. I think I used this at the beginning of the lesson. Hopefully you haven't zoned out yet. So it is to lose concentration, to not be listening, usually just for a short period of time, to lose concentration. I completely zone out when he talks about football. I really hope you've enjoyed the lesson. Do have a go. Comment below if you can do your own A to Z of advanced slang. I would be very impressed. And don't forget, if you would like to come and study, learn, speak more slang in the UK, then you can go to www.elcuk.co.uk and contact us there on the contact form. Just tell us where you'd like to study, when you'd like to study and what. We'll be there to help you every step of the way. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you very soon with perhaps a little bit of grammar next time.